The Hong Kong consumers are very knowledgeable. It's all local Chinese people. It is mainly young and it's quite evenly split, split between men and women. So you've got, uh, it's a really promising time because you've got a lot of 20 something and 30 something year old couples coming and discovering the wines, taking notes, serious, and then uh, uh, ordering the wine. So that's very promising for the future. So these are people that are quite mature and want to learn more, hence the education and the tastings. It's very, very important. incredibly frenetic, the number of people. I'd come from cities, but I'd been getting going to smaller and smaller cities from London to Sydney to Melbourne, and suddenly Hong Kong is huge and there's so much action, so much light and noise and, uh, uh, and things going on. So my first few days, I was a bit in shock. Um, and then of course you get used to it and it, it becomes a way of life. And that's a very exciting part of Hong Kong, this whole central area around Victoria Harbour. There is so much to do. There's, Whatever you want to do, there's, there's some way to do it and, and at any time of the day or night. But I also like the other side of Hong Kong, which is much quieter, which is where I choose to live. We're just celebrating our 18th birthday, which makes us quite uh, uh, mature in terms of wine retail in this market because the wine industry has really only exploded over the last five years. Um, we have now 30 stores in Hong Kong, two more in Macau and two in Shanghai now. Uh, our, essentially our business is wine retail and it it's really is premium wine. Having come from other markets, our starting point is, would be 10 euros. We really don't sell anything below that and most of what we sell is above 20 euros. Uh, and that's, that's what people want. People are happy to pay good money for very good wine. What they like in Watson's Wine is the, uh, is the selection, the provenance and the advice. So the, the relationship with the customers and our staff is very important. People trust us to, to recommend wine to them. I, I think that our stores, are, well I know that our stores are still majority French. More than half our sales, sales are still French, and that's largely Bordeaux. And if you look behind us, most of behind what's behind here is Bordeaux, it's French. But what we're finding now is that we can ask a client if they're willing to look at other regions and, and, and try new things, and normally the answer is yes. And then we will try and introduce them to wines from other parts of the world. And we're seeing great, great growth in other French, particularly Burgundy, but also Italian, American, Chilean, Australian. So wines from all over the world. What we'll all, always do as well is offer taste what, to taste wine. Uh, we talked a little about Coravan. Coravan is a system that allows us to be able to offer a wine with no wastage, so we can offer tastings uh, all day, every day to our clients. If we want people to discover new wines and not just rest on the wines they've heard of or the wines that a, a particular reviewer has, has, has recommended, then we need people to, to understand wines of other regions. So we need them to come and taste uh, and, uh, and discover new. So here we have a wine bar and we will, at least once a week, we will have a wine producer here showing their wines. And that would be 20 or 30 customers coming and tasting a wine they probably have never tasted before. Possibly they've never tasted a wine from that region before. So last, two weeks ago we had Jeff Grosset here from the Clare Valley in Australia, making some of the finest Riesling in the world. But a lot of customers have just not tried those wines. But they come, they try, they like. Portugal has not had a lot of love here and you're here and that's great and I, I, I encourage 
bodies to come here and to try and spread the word of, uh, of Portuguese wine. When one considers the volume of wine made in Portugal and the quality of Portuguese wine and the history of Portuguese wine, plus its link with the UK and this being an ex-British colony, it really deserves to have more space here. It, currently in an average wine store, Portugal would have less coverage than, than places like South Africa. And, and that's a shame. And I think we need to have more understanding of Portuguese wine. I, I was very impressed with the vibrancy of the young whites of Douro and the more balanced wines than I remember from years ago. Wines now that have got uh, the acidity and the tannin and the freshness of the fruit rather than maybe the, some of the richer, older styles that I remember from Dow and etc. Uh, of old. So I think the wines are, are undoubtedly of a quality that should be here. We're in Lee Gardens now in Causeway Bay, one of the great centres for shopping in Hong Kong. You can see all the great brands behind you, Ralph Lauren, Lauren Cartier, Gucci. Um, and we do have a Watson's wine store here. But most importantly now, we are going to Seasons restaurants. Uh, Seasons opened last year and it already has a Michelin star. And it was opened by the chef that created the three star, earned the three stars for L'Atelier de Robuchon in Central. And this is his first venture on his own, yeah. making some stunning food. And um, something that Asia has that you don't see very much in Europe is a lot of the finest dining is inside hotels or shopping malls. Whereas normally a great restaurant in Europe would be a standalone restaurant and you would go to an amazing building. Whereas here it tends to be that you, you go inside a shopping mall. So let's go. Ali, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. We go into a modern kitchen and, and the modern way to eat, what, what I call the modern eat, way to eat is that, you know, uh, I'm, from I'm from France, so of course we have a lot of fine dining. But for example, I, I find out that Hong Kong people like to eat uh, good food. Uh, in a simple uh, environment and also not too complicated. So in some way I design a season as a, a smart French casual restaurant, which is, uh, well, which is a restaurant where you feel good, where you can access to food without of, uh, being too expensive, uh, but we can still enjoy the different, uh, the different uh, flavors and seasons of uh, all the French items. Because for me, I think uh, sometimes French are a, bit, a little bit too complicated uh, for Hong Kong people. And I find out that uh, it's nice to make a soft version of a fine dining, which is a restaurant where you can access to good food without of getting too crazy in terms of price, but also as well um, uh, in terms of approach in the service where the people feel relaxed, you know. Hong Kong is the great influencer of Asia. When the tax was removed in 2008, their star the, the stated aim was to make uh, Hong Kong the Asian hub for wine and I think they've been very very successful in doing that and if we look at the, the growth of retail of restaurants and of auction sites you can see that Hong Kong now is the place to come and I think that Hong Kong therefore is I often call it the billboard of Asia there are so many people that come through Hong Kong and they like to see what the trends are here in Hong Kong and it's a great influence then for the greater China and, and beyond it is amazing that we're, the next corner is Times Square, which is kind of the, the centre of shopping here. And it's the most expensive rental real estate in the world, retail rental real estate in the world. And yet we've got very small local stores just around the corner. It, it, it's a nice mix. This is about one hour drive north, and we are now in the east of the mainland of Hong Kong, part of mainland China. So uh, this is new territories, an area called Sai Kung, 
Uh, behind us, that is all Sai Kung Country Park, all around us. So there's a big reservoir over there, and then there's a huge country park where some of the great walking and hiking is, and there's nothing built in there. You, you're not allowed to build in there, and frankly, you can't. So we're a long way away, but Sai Kung is an enclave which has traditionally had British people living here as well. Today, it's a lovely mix of local people and many Europeans as well. A lot of people come here for the weekends, they come for the seafood and they come for the water activity. So we've got all the boats here, there's kayaking, there's uh, water skiing, plenty of things to do. Lots of family activity and there's lots of camping in the mountains. You can order from the menu but what most people do is like this. No thanks. <laughs> they, they will come to the, 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 uh, the seafood and choose their own fish or their own lobster or crab or whatever they want. You can see the big king crabs at the back there. So whatever you want, it's all here. This is, a, this is a great tea shop. He specializes in Chinese pua tea, which is a, a very old fermented black tea that you buy in a, in a circle, in a cake, and then you break bits off into a very traditional Chinese teapot. But uh, they focus just on pua tea there, which is just, I think, the best. And you buy, you buy the tea based on whether it's fermented or not and how old it is. So you can buy a, a cake that is maybe 40 years old and you just like wine and you will pay some people pay I don't know hundred thousand dollars for uh, a cake of tea but the flavor is amazing China is very difficult to to summate in in one one group because China's 1.5 billion people there's a lot of different regions and a lot of different attitudes so what happens in Shanghai or Shenzhen is quite different to what happens in Chengdu or any of the other second, third, fourth tier cities. So China is province by province, but overall, outside of those first tier cities, it's, I think, still more basic and still more influenced by what people have heard rather than what people have been educated on themselves. But China changes very, very quickly more than anywhere else I've ever seen. If people decide to take something on, it happens quickly. So I think that today, the emerging middle class, which is several hundred million people, are beginning to think that they actually want to have glasses of wine on the table at home. Now that's a big change. That's not drinking Lafitte because somebody told them they should drink Lafitte. That's people actually enjoying the wine. And that's a big difference. People often talk to me about a China strategy, a greater China strategy, and their strategy is, we're going to sell wine in China, but they're not coming and experiencing. So you're here, and you're here for an extended period. That's how you discover the place. And the longer here, the more you get a feel for it, the more you talk to people, and the more that you, you st start to understand how customers think, and then that influences into the greater China. So my, my recommendation for a Portuguese producer or a regional body is get over here, but not just for the trade shows. Vin Expo is very important, of course, but that's trade. But come outside of that. Come, come and spend time and, and meet customers. People like Watson's and many others, one can have two or three days with us and then meet 50 customers or 500 customers. And that's a great way of finding, discovering what uh, consumers are drinking. Veja este e outros episódios do programa A Essência na página de Facebook da Revista de Vinhos.